Hello, hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So in this video today we are traveling locally in London and we're going to explore some of my favorite things to see and do in December in London. So December is such a special time in London. It's actually one of my favorite times even though it's a little bit chilly out because the city is so magically lit up and decorated for Christmas. Every neighborhood that you go to in London during Christmas just has something special and unique and different. So I'm gonna share you some of my kind of greatest highlights of what I kind of saw and did that's festive in December in London. I'm also gonna take you to a festive lunch that I had for Christmas at the Thomas Cubitt pub, which was outstanding and you don't just have to go there around Christmas, you can go there any time of year. And last but certainly not least, I am also going to take you to a pop-up exhibition at the Saatchi Gallery, which is the Bulgari Serpenti exhibition and it's called Metamorphosis and it was such a spectacular immersive experience and of course I brought my camera along. So if that sounds good, come join me for some fun in London. There are so many great places you can check out festive Christmas lights in London, but one of my favorites every year is South Moulton Street with these dramatic blue arches with the stars on it. It's just so beautiful to kind of stroll, walk down the street, take some pictures. It's definitely always a must visit for me every December. Just nearby, you can also go and visit the Ever After Garden. Now, the Ever After Garden is actually an initiative in support of the Royal Marsden Cancer Charity. And while this initiative has been going on since 2019, I only first saw this in 2022. So the Ever After Garden is thought of as a garden of remembrance. It's meant to be this reflective, tranquil haven in the heart of Mayfair, and it's meant to be a place where friends and family can remember loved ones that they lost. And how it works is, I think either online or in person, you can make a suggested minimum donation of 10 pounds per rose. Now these are faux roses, and you can then have the words of your dedication actually be added to one of the illuminated roses in the garden, which is quite remarkable. And this initiative has raised over 250,000 pounds for the Royal Marsden Cancer Charity, thanks to so many generous people around the world. And what I would say is, it's such a beautiful and serene place to go and visit. It really is special to see all of these kind of white, illuminated cloth roses lit up in the garden square and I would definitely as a result recommend that you go and visit in the evening so that you can truly experience kind of this tranquil <laughs> tranquil uh, garden of reflection at kind of the peak time to experience it. Now this initiative has ended at the end of December, so this is one to mark on your calendars for this coming year and future years, should you be in London around November or December months. Two other great spots to check out in Mayfair would be the famous Claridge's Hotel, which is just as stunning on the outside as it is on the inside for Christmas. Definitely book in for a festive drink or tea if you are willing to have a splurge. And another one that's also in Mayfair that has done these really lovely displays the past few years is Coin Restaurant, which is very much on my list to try because the menu looks great. But I loved this red old school mini with the Christmas tree on top and it was stuffed to the brim with presents on the inside. So great for a Christmas photo op. And then moving along, another neighborhood you might not expect that is very festively fabulous is Paddington and specifically the Sheldon Square Paddington Central area. 
They had festive phone booths. A lot of the restaurants had done beautiful decor, kind of highlighting the outside of the restaurant, which I really loved, like Smith's Bar and Grill and uh, Aliu, I hope I'm saying that right. But they also had some really exciting other installations throughout the area, including this really fabulous London bus, which actually kids, or I guess fun-loving grown-ups, could go inside and have a picture of themselves inside the ground floor of the festive London Christmas bus, which was great. And of course, if you're in the area of Paddington, you have to go seek out the Paddington Bear statue, which is located just across the Darcy and May Green houseboat. So map that on Google Maps. Another must-see neighborhood in London during the festive period is Elizabeth Street in Belgravia. Now, Bel Belgravia itself is a fabulous neighborhood and Eclexton Yards is great to visit as well. But Elizabeth Street, the restaurants and shops, they rise to the occasion like no other during Christmas. And they also do decorate for other festive times of year. So it's always really good to do a little research if you're going to be in town, if anything else is going on. But some noteworthy spots were the Peggy portion cake and cupcake spot. Now they don't have a lot of seating inside, I believe at this location, but could be great to grab a little takeaway nibble and go stroll the street. Um, all of the restaurants just look so beautiful and so festive and it really was such a joy to experience and I always just love checking it out every year. Hey guys, so today I am off to a very fun and festive Christmas lunch at the Thomas Cubitt Pub in Belgravia. I have been here before, um, both for dinner and um, I think just dinner actually, but I'm really excited to try it for lunch even though I think the um, <laughs> The menus are the same, although they do change seasonally. So yeah, let's go check it out and see how it is. All right, so lunch at the Thomas Cubitt Pub did not disappoint. As I had mentioned before, I've been for dinner, but the menu was definitely different this time and it was fantastic. Everyone was so happy with their food, so I'm gonna give you a rundown of what we ordered. So we started with the beef carpaccio, which was incredible. I'm not usually the biggest beef carpaccio fan, but this one was just hit all the right flavor notes and I would definitely recommend it. We also had the most outstanding bread and butter. Oh, simple pleasures for me are a great piece of bread, a great a slather of salted butter. Mm. We also had this orecchette, which is not something I would have normally ordered, but it was so good in that right mix of savory, spicy, mm, goodness. I would definitely come back and order this again, which is saying a lot. Uh, for my main, I had the halibut, which was served on a bed of buttery fennel and potatoes, and it was just perfectly cooked and delicious. One of my uh, dining companions had the sugar pit bacon chop, which I think is just a fancy term for a pork chop. This was outstanding and came with some chips and some uh, Bernays, I think, or aioli. Another friend of mine had this amazingly huge steak. Now, this is definitely a very kind of steak and meat heavy pub, um, but you obviously, as you've seen, you can also get seafood, vegetarian meals, etc. One of my colleagues um, is pescatarian, so she ended up actually just having some of the starters and a really great salad. So, and as you saw with me, I had the fish, but also kind of tried a little bit of everything else. So there definitely are vegetarian friendly options. There are pescatarian friendly options, which really makes this pub a great all-rounder um, if you are looking for kind of a more gourmet pub experience in London. I will say because it is more of a beef heavy menu, it is priced a little bit higher than maybe some of the other pubs out there. Um, but I think it's actually very worth it and it's not really unreasonably priced. So I'm gonna leave a link to the menu down below as, as I do with every place 
featured in this video so you can check it out yourself. Hey guys, so tonight I have a fun one for you. I am going to go check out the Bulgari Serpenti exhibition at the Saatchi Gallery in Chelsea. Now the Saatchi Gallery in Chelsea does tons of great short-term kind of pop-ups and as of late there's been a big trend of luxury brands doing these pop-ups at the Saatchi Gallery. So I've been to the Tiffany exhibition, I think I want to say like Hermes, but um, so many great ones over the years in London and the tickets were free. It only runs until the end of December and it's was kind of a first come first serve get it try to get it online and much to my luck a friend of mine scored the ticket so we're gonna go check it out right now so let's go see what it's all about so i also went to check out the bulgari serpenti metamorphosis at the saatchi gallery in chelsea this was a really outstanding exhibition. It was only on for one month between, I think, November and December, and it was in celebration of the 75th anniversary of the Serpenti, which is pretty fabulous. And I think that this has been a traveling exhibition in a few different places. Um, but what was great about it is you came into the Saatchi Gallery and you first got to have an immersion of the Bulgari brand. You got to see tons of historic gorgeous vintage pieces from the brand I've already picked out which watch I want which was really lovely so you get a mix of history you get to see a mix of some of the vintage uh, Serpenti pieces and some of the famous people that have worn them which was really wonderful and then you get transported into the I think it's the metamorphosis room which is this immersive experience that uses artificial intelligence to reimagine the Serpenti in many different and interesting ways. The idea behind the exhibition, especially the artificial intelligence component of the exhibition, was to celebrate and explore the ever-changing snake, specifically around continuous rebirth and continued evolution over 75 years. I mean, to think about an iconic part of the Bulgari brand, that really has kind of passed the test of time. It has had to continually reinvent itself for the trends, the styles, the fabulous people that are wearing it over time. And what I loved is as someone who works in technology and marketing was to see the artificial intelligence and digital art component of this. It truly was mesmerizing. And for a free exhibition, it really felt like a wonderful treat to get to immerse yourself in the Bulgari brand. Well, with that said, that wraps up my Life in London vlog, giving you a little highlight of what I got up to in December in London. I realize I'm posting this in the new year in 2023. However, every December, there are so many wonderful things that happen in London. It's a great travel destination. So if you are watching this video as you are planning a trip to London in December, do a little research. Obviously the Bulgari exhibition might not be on, but a lot of the things that I mentioned in this video will carry over year over year. And I hope this inspires you a bit to see some of the wonderful things you can get up to. I will also leave a link down below because the in a maybe last year the year before i also did a video highlighting all of london's christmas lights which is why i didn't repeat it in this video so if you are coming to london and you want to know some of the top neighborhoods to check out the christmas light displays that will be linked down below so as always um, leave a comment if you liked this video um, write christmas lights if you made it all the way to the end and please let me know have you gotten up to anything exciting in London during the December period that you think is a must-see 
because I'd love to hear about it. Um, like this video if you liked it, that really helps this channel. And if you wanna see more of my life in London adventures as well as my travels around the world and other things I'm loving, please hit that subscribe button. So thanks again for tuning in and I will see you soon.